السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله it's uh, يوم الجمعة يوم Friday this is Friday uh, first Friday of ذو القعدة of this year of 1443 سبحان الله we are coming close to ending the year and uh, we have begun the series of the three sacred months so ذو القعدة ذو الحجة ومحرم these three sacred months come in sequence and uh, they also mark the transition into a new year and uh, they are importantly associated with uh, the travel the preparation and travel to the Hajj of course performing the Hajj and then inshallah as Allah decrees coming back uh, or, or not uh, and then starting the new year and then of course the fourth sacred month is Rajab that comes on its own as the seventh month of the, the year and Rajab as we have spoken about uh, many times is very blessed and auspicious for all those reasons. Now beginning these three sacred months uh, from before the time of Rasulullah this time period from the time of Sayyidina Ibrahim and instituting the Hajj, this time period has been associated or connected uh, with the inner state one undergoes uh, when one prepares oneself mentally, emotionally, spiritually obviously to perform the Hajj. And nowadays it's much easier to perform the Hajj and uh, a lot of the dangers associated with the journey are 95 percent gone but in those days one really undertook the pilgrimage uh, with the mindset that it's very likely one may not come back right because the dangers of the journey itself are so great no airplanes even before the time of ships and things you know uh, so many hardships one has to uh, be prepared to face along the way uh, those days bandits robbers <laughs> every possible thing you can think of disease you might have to pass through countries and places in conflict so it was a really a huge undertaking and then if one was so fortunate as to alhamdulillah reach there and complete the Hajj uh, the new year of Muharram always associated with a new beginning uh, and sort of a rejuvenation that you have uh, inshallah pray that your hajj is accepted and therefore you come back with uh, as a newborn baby so this idea of a new birth a new beginning a new start in life right nowadays most of us who grew up in the western context would associate that with what people would do as a new year resolution hmm? In a sense for us also, it is like that, Muharram marks the new year, but uh, it is tied to the spiritual, uh, the spiritual um, uh, uh, event, this great spiritual event of the Hajj, whether you go or you don't go. So those of you who are not going this year, don't, uh, uh, don't uh, sit on the sidelines, you participate. Uh, spiritually by understanding that we have begun the sacred months and by opening yourself to all the lights and all the blessings and all the sweet breezes of Allah's mercy and guidance that come in these months so that you also may go through this process of rejuvenation cleaning cleansing rebirthing and start the new year in the right way inshallah um, those of you who are going for the Hajj inshallah this year it will be uh, a tremendous blessing after two years of difficulty without being able to go so I ask that you will give me and uh, our foundation our organization Irfa and all the people who help and support us in our family uh, in your dua and you are there Our strength 
lies in how deeply we are connected to our Lord. And our major forms of connection to our Lord comprise various types of dhikr. And the strongest of that uh, adhkar is the Quran. Our recitation, our contemplation, our reading, our understanding, uh, our focus on the Quran because Quran is kalamullah. Right? So that is the greatest dhikr. After that you have uh, salat, the, the, the ritual worship, which is a ritual uh, given in heaven to our master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So that also has a heavenly connection, very strong heavenly connection. Right? And this is why it must be performed in the way it is performed. And uh, that is acceptable and we do not uh, change things. So you don't recite in Arab, uh, language other than Arabic, for example. So in the, the Salat also, a major component of the Salat is Qiratul Quran, recitation of the Quran, and Tasbih, right? A lot of glorification of Allah in various postures. So I've spoken about the foundational importance of Tasbih, SubhanAllah, glorifying Allah uh, many times before. That is the beginning of all things, that is the middle of all things, that is the end of all things, and that is the purpose of all things. Everything you do is to glorify Allah. In Surah Taha, uh, very famously, Allah gives Sayyidina Musa his mission. He tells him, this is what you must do, you must go to Fir'aun and you must correct him. And then Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he's very self-aware. He knows who he is. He knows his weaknesses. Uh, he accepts his mission. And this is the beauty of his conduct. He asks Allah to give him what he needs to complete the word. Uh, the famous dua, Rabbi Shrahli Sadri, Waisirli Amri, oh, etc. It goes on. Uh, but we recite the first part of the dua a lot. It comes in Surah Taha. But we forget the end of uh, that prayer. I'll, Sayyidina Musa asks all of that. Uh, he says, I want to do all of this so I can glorify you excessively. Uh, uh, my exact phrasing may not be correct, but if you recite those ayat, um, he says we will, we want to do all of this, we succeed in this mission, so we can glorify you uh, uh, excessively and remember you excessively. So the purpose of all of that, fulfilling the mission, is also going back to glorifying Allah. So this is the beginning the middle, the end, because Allah is the creator, the sustainer, the nourisher, the cherisher, the beginningless beginning, the endless end, the true reality, the, the truth, lies al haq, the truth. So all of that that is in the cosmos, in creation, its purpose is to exalt and glorify, right? Don't forget that. Don't forget that. And glorification has many, many... Um, me, many um, interpretations, many methods. Doing a good deed is glorifying. Uh, looking after one's family is glorifying. Uh, spreading peace on earth is glorifying. But it has to be done with that intention. The niyyah has to be uh, acceptance and recognition of who is God, who is your Lord, who is the Rabb. Rabb is better than Lord. It's more cherishing, huh? cherishing, nurturing, looking after presence. And who is Abd? Abd is also better than saying slave because Abd is devotee, adoring, uh, adoring. So we are sort of in modern terms like an adoring fan, you know. You have these fans these days for pop idols. Um, who they uh, give, they see how devoted they are. But we are Abdullah, we are devoted to the real God, huh? no idols, one God. So you, your intention is paramount. So when your intention is right, everything you do in your day and your night, uh, 
becomes an actor, that's way of glorification. And of course, uh, uh, the basic that's way is to say it on the tongue, right? And say it on the tongue so much so that it becomes such a habit for you to be in a state of tasbih of Allah, it enters your heart. So I remember, um, uh, I, I won't mention that, um, but there are people, uh, you know, they are speaking to you and they're interacting with you and they may be giving a talk or even working, driving. But they're always doing, uh, you see, they're doing their tasbih in their hand or whatever it is, on their fingers or using beads, whatever it is. So some people wonder, how is that possible? Well, it's possible because you have trained yourself to such an extent that you can now separate your brain. Your brain is handling all the things in your external life, your mulki life, your work, your work, you're working in front of computers, most of us are all that. But your heart is in now in a state of tasbih, and that is what you have to train yourself to do. So the more tasbih you do, like when you start doing excessive numbers, uh, hundreds, hundreds of thousands, eventually your heart will grow to such a capacity and expand to such a capacity that it will be able to uh, control the brain. So the heart becomes now the king and the brain is the minister. That is the way you should be. It shouldn't be your brain is the king and the heart is a, a vassal of the king. The heart is the king and the heart tells the brain, you look after the affairs of state, I will be glorifying Allah, right? So this is how you must train your heart. And then once your heart expands to that level, your ruh, which is like the queen, the ruh connects the internal to heaven. I, I associate the ruh with the lungs. If I associate the king with the heart, I would say the seat of the ruh is the breath, the lungs. You have to breathe. Allah, Allah, you take a breath, huh? so this is where Allah, the breath works with the heart, the lungs and the heart, Allah, so now your ruh starts expanding and growing, and so the ruh is like the queen, once the ruh starts really becoming nurtured and starts growing, what happens, the ruh then can get back to what it was meant to do because the ruh is what can go to heaven and come back. So your body, for example, in your salat, your body is in the salat, right? Your brain should now also be uh, ordered by the heart to focus on the words you are saying. The heart is in a state of um, praising Allah and the ruh can now make the mi'raj of the mu'min. Go to heaven, be with our Lord, come back. That is when you taste khushu. You understand? So this is the Islamic way of elevating the consciousness, elevating the psyche, becoming an intentional, mindful, purified uh, human being full of noor. So these are a few small... Uh, snippets that I have shared. These things we teach uh, in more detail and depth in person. I don't like to really uh, teach this in this medium over YouTube because um, I don't know who is listening, in what situation you are, what circumstances you are in, where, who you are sometimes, where you are. So it's hard for me to... Um, I prefer to teach when I have the person in front of me and we can engage in a real uh, communication. But this is the nature of the world we are in, the situation we are in, the circumstances we are in, and we have to uh, try our best in whatever situation we find ourselves in. So I'm giving you small snippets, and I'm keeping it extremely general and very basic, right? Because I can't go into things that are advanced and in-depth because they can easily be misunderstood, and that's not uh, correct. This is powerful knowledge. This is knowledge about reaching truth. Truth is Allah. So you can't, uh, I don't want anyone to go wrong, right? This is why I won't say things more. If any of you want to learn, you must, inshallah, uh, reach me. And I think we'll put, uh, we'll put our administration, I think the emails in the description. 
So we train the heart to command the brain. Hmm? We talk about what the heart is created to do, what the brain is created to do. We talk about what is the ruh, what is your soul, what is your spirit, and how to grow the ruh, to give the ruh its rightful place. Uh, those of you who play chess, chess is a very, um, it's, it's been highly praised in a tradition. I don't know why nowadays Muslims look down upon it. It's an ex excellent tool for training the intellect and training the psyche. So, and, and the Muslims of old used to really admire it for how it can be uh, used as anything can be to teach about Allah. So I would say I play chess a lot. I used to in my young days. Uh, you know, the brain is like your ministers. The, uh, the bishops. <laughs> your heart is like the king. The ruh is like the queen. And if you notice, the king and the queen, they have the same types of moves. They can move in, this, they can move in every direction. Uh, the other pieces cannot. But the queen can go unlimited. The king is limited in how the king can move. So this is like the heart and the roof. The heart can connect to very deep realities in the Malakut. I told you before it's the vehicle of reaching the Malakut. But it's limited in its capacity to travel. The roof can go to heaven and come back. Right. So this is the relationship between the heart and the roof. So I like to say the heart like the, the physical heart. The ruh like the physical lungs. The lungs deal with air. The heart deals with blood. Air can certainly travel further than blood. <laughs> Subhanallah. Huh? Inshallah, if, 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 if Allah blesses us to be in person and teach, we can teach more. So we have entered now the sacred months of Dhul Ka'adha, Dhul Hijjah, Muharram. So keep your eyes and ears open to Allah's messages and signs that will start flowing. These are the days they start flowing. Um, increase your tasbih of Allah. You know, subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah wa bihamdihi. These are there's many, many a hadith about this adkar, this dhikr, where it is said it's so heavy on the scales, so light on the tongue. So whenever you have free time, when you're driving, when you're working, when you're eating, if no one's around, start saying this. Make this a habit that you will always go back to. Tasbih, huh? Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah wa bihamdi, astaghfirullah wa Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah wa bihamdihi, la ilaha illallah, astaghfirullah, it's very powerful to come. Hmm? Especially astaghfirullah, I mentioned before, I found, mashallah, the right English word, I believe, to explain the meaning of uh, uh, um, like, uh, ghafur, <laughs> or it's the act of istighfar, it means to be ensconced. Ensconced. I don't think most people know this English word these days. Ensconced in the Lord's, the beloved, the Rab's presence. To, to be uh, enveloped in this protective place. So to, ensconced, to be ensconced in Allah's love. I've spoken about um, love and istighfar before. I'll try to link that somewhere. Inshallah. So, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al la ilaha illallah, astaghfirullah. Very powerful dhikr, keep repeating it. Huh? That's enough to be shared on this medium. Inshallah, we can share more if Allah blesses us to sit in person with each other. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is, Alhamdulillah, the book, Futuhat uh, Yasiya is now uh, available also in black and white. So this book has um, some illustrations in, it's in color, yeah. So maps and things in color. Uh, so that's a little bit more expensive because the way the printing works, we have to uh, have the whole thing printed in color. So now the black and white version is available. It's on the uh, Amazon page. 
so that's cheaper so I hope you can get that and start reading it um, inshallah Bismillah ta'ala if Allah blesses us with tawfiq uh, the third thing I wanted to say is I should start uh, should resume our classes on the Quran inshallah so uh, I want to do that as a as a live class if Allah uh, allows us so that we can also interact so I think for now we'll set a time for this month of June <coughs> uh, from 4 to 6 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific daylight time no Pacific standard time Vancouver time current Vancouver time 4 to 6 p.m. on on um, Sundays, right? So I'll, I'll be live on the YouTube channel, inshallah, and we'll start teaching either from this book or, or we will continue with the uh, Quran. We, we'll stop the Tafsir series since I've been traveling so much and also to write the book. So now, uh, inshallah, at least this coming month, I'll be in one place. After that, I don't know. Um ta'ala. I will be here so um, so June for the month of June 4 to 6 p.m. Sundays we'll do a live YouTube class so all of you who've been writing and wanting to uh, study uh, please try to come that will be make me very happy uh, especially if you can ask your questions and then I can reply them because it's uh, these are very advanced concepts and uh, Unfortunately, it's not common knowledge for most modern Muslims. So I like to be questioned because then I'll know where you're at. And then we can, inshallah, begin a dialogue. Alhamdulillah. Right? So these few things I wanted to share. One is the centrality of tasbih. The second is we have entered these blessed months, the sacred months. So you must increase your connection to your Lord in these days. Third is about the book, uh, that it's now available in black and white also, so it's much cheaper. Um, it only means the diagrams will not be in color, so it's, inshallah, I hope that makes it more accessible. Uh, and then the fourth thing, we'll start our classes, inshallah, Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m., uh, Vancouver time, and I'd love to I hope you can join, inshallah. So that's enough. May Allah bless you and protect you this uh, blessed Juma, the first Juma of these three sacred months. Alhamdulillah. We thank Allah and praise Him that we have been brought so far and He has kept us safe in these very uncertain times. So I ask Allah to continue to shower His blessings and His light and His protection, His rahmah, His maghfira, His mawadda. Upon you. You are all in my dua and I ask you to keep me in all those blessings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah ta'ala wa barakatuh.